And here we are again, Hornets. We are now about to do uh, part two of our analyzing word meanings. Um, we already did what well, we did. Okay, we did lesson on part one, but I'm going to expound on that a little bit because part one is all about how to use technical, connotative, and figurative in an informational text. And I want to go ahead and start working on how to use that in a fictional text, on a literary text. So, um, our directions that you've got right now. So let's see, it says, after reading the excerpt from Stephen King's The Shining about a family moving across the country to the Rocky Mountains to take care of an old, supposedly haunted hotel, complete the pact and answer the questions. So we're looking for our purpose, our audience, our central idea, the text structure, theme, and tone. And then I've already given you the setting and it's that it's a 50-year-old isolated empty hotel in the Rocky Mountains. And I went ahead and gave you the three characters. You've got Jack the dad, Wendy the mom, and Danny the child. He's about seven, if that helps y'all. Um, and then you're going to have to give me the conflict. What's our problem in the story? And then the next thing you're going to have to do is I want you to predict what will happen later in the story based on this excerpt. And then the very last thing we're going to do is... We're going to look at our directions at the bottom that tells us then we're going to use different types of word meanings and tone discussed in our lesson nine, part one. And we're going to analyze each character's different reactions to the wasp's nest and explain how it is either technical, connotative, or figurative. And I'm going to let you know that you can pretty much, each character is one of those. You're going to use each one only once, technical, connotative, or figurative. And then you're going to have to give me textual, you're going to have to give me textual evidence from the story to do that, to do that because part, okay? You're gonna have to print, you're going to have to make sure you go back to the story to tell me how this is that Jack's reaction is either technical, figurative, or connotative. You're gonna have to make sure you, you're gonna have to go back to the story to tell me how Wendy's reaction is technical, connotative, or figurative, how Danny's reaction is technical, connotative, or figurative. And if it helps when you're giving me that, you might want to tell me because it's positive, it's negative, it's neutral, and tell me how that reaction is positive, negative, or neutral, and why it's technical, connotative, or figurative. And see if that helps you come up with your answer. All right, so I'm going to scroll back to the top. Maybe. Okay. So we're looking at an excerpt from The Shining by Stephen King. So we end up, and I have, if you notice these little brackets right here, this is not from the text, okay? Miss Murray put the bracket, Jack said, so you would know which character is starting to talk. And it's the same thing right here where Danny yells. That's not in the story either, but it's in those brackets so you know which character it is because this is a longer conversation that's been going on in the story from where this excerpt is picking up. So Read the story. The first thing that you've got to make sure you do when we have a new story is that we want to make sure that we box our title and it says from the shining. And that lets us know that it's an excerpt because it's got that word from and the title is the shining. And it also has appeared that we're looking at fiction, which lets me know that this is not real. It is fake. And that means it's also going to be in what order? Pro, no logical. It's going to be in chronological order. And then it's going to have a plot with characters and a setting. Characters, a setting, a conflict, and a resolution. And there's going to be a theme. And we're going to look how each character's. we're going to look for some tone. That each one of those characters is going to set. Okay. So, and when we also look at characters, is there a protagonist? Is there an antagonist? What's our conflict going to be? Okay. So, Jack said, you're a little nervous about the snow coming, aren't you? She shrugged. I suppose. If you think it's foolish, I don't. In fact, you can make appointments for all three of us. We'll get our clean bills of health and then we'll then we can sleep easy at night. I'll make the appointments this afternoon, she said. Mom! Look, mommy! 
he came running to her with a large gray thing in his hands. And for one comic horrible moment, Wendy thought it was a brain and she saw what it really was and recoiled instinctively. Jack put an arm around her. It's all right. The tenants who didn't fly away have been shaken out. I used the bug bomb. She looked at the large wasp's nest her son was holding, but would not touch it. Are you sure it's safe? Positive. I had one in my room when I was a kid. My dad gave it to me. Want to put it in your room, Danny? Yeah, right now. He turned around and raced through the double doors. They could hear his muffled running feet on the main stairs. There were wasps in there, she said. Did you get stung? Where's my purple heart? He asked and displayed his finger. The swelling had already begun to go down and she ooed over it satisfyingly and gave it a small gentle kiss. Did you pull the stinger out? Wasps don't leave them in. That's bees. They have barb stingers. Wasp stingers are smooth. That's what makes them so dangerous. They can sting again and again. Jack, are you sure that's safe for him to have? I follow the directions on the bomb. The stuff is guaranteed to kill every single bug in two hours' time and then dissipate with no residue. I hate them, she said. What? Wasps? Anything that stings, she said. And with that, you should be able to figure out which character and answer the questions at the bottom of your sheet about which character goes with which type of word meaning and fill out your pact. All right. So good luck. If you have any questions, you can shoot me an email, raise your hand. Um, you are going to be turning this in and I will be grading it and seeing how we do. All right.